Fantastic. So I'd like to welcome all of the leaders here for anybody that's joining, that's tuning in, uh, maybe on your lunch hour, post lunch hour. We're going to dive into some of the ways you can find your spark as a new people leader, or maybe as a people leader who's just looking for some guidance and experience. So thank you for joining. Um, again, in, in keeping things short, sweet, but also giving you as much information as possible, we're going to run about 15 minutes. So if you have to jump, please let us know. If you're watching, please just give a thumbs up and say hey in the chat. We'd love to know that you're here and present. Um, and we can also follow up with, uh, a member of our team can follow up with some additional information. Um, should you wish to download a slide deck or have more visual that supports what we're about to talk about. So with that being said, um, I'm thrilled to be here today and new to this LinkedIn Live. So thanks again for bearing with me at the beginning of today's, uh, today's conversation. But I'm here to introduce some, some very simple tips and ways that our new people leaders or our mid-level managers who are really stuck in that, um, that vice between you know, upper management, between their teams, uh, I've mentioned this and referenced this so often and also laterally where they're really communication bubble and they have to have the agility to be able to pivot and move. If you are a mid-level manager and speaking directly to you, you know what that's like. When you have to wear multiple different hats, you have to move through different conversations, present information in different ways so that you can get buy-in as quick as possible, make your decision and move on. So we're going to talk about a couple of different tips, six uh, specifically, that you can use to really find that spark as you move through all of these different contexts so that you can show up as the most influential leader for your team and get your stuff done because at the end of the day, that's also very important. Now, I've referenced some of the, maybe some of the struggles and challenges that our mid-level leaders face quite often, and especially in today's, I'll say it, I know it's pretty cliche, but in today's rapidly evolving business landscape, um, whether it's, are we working from home? Are we working in the office? What are the rules? What are the processes? Things are constantly changing and change is now just a part of our everyday, but it's these mid-level leaders who have to field all of these conversations, these concerns, and that can lead them to face a unique set of challenges. So the pace of change that we're experiencing right now, the need to balance competing priorities, um, depending on, you know, what their role entails and the pressure to really guide your team effectively can be quite overwhelming. Not to mention the things that individual leaders face like imposter syndrome, um, how do I delegate to who, some of that on, on the spot decision making that we may struggle with also in our personal lives. And studies really do support that this sentiment is echoed over and over again, that our mid-level leaders say this can get pretty overwhelming, especially if we don't have guidelines, if we don't have frameworks, and if we don't have the tools to be able to navigate this uncertainty, the question marks and the what ifs. Now we know that having high performing and happy teams requires self awareness and it requires intentional action. A lot of our leaders, and this is no fault necessarily to organizations. Sometimes we have budgetary constraints. Sometimes we just don't have the time, but a lot of our leaders feel like they don't have the tools to be able to strengthen these skills. So maybe that's a training program. Maybe that's just a mentor within the organization. They're lacking that what's my next step or what is my ability to navigate this situation I've never experienced before. And as a result, a lot of our level leaders learn lessons the hard way through trial and error. I'm a big advocate for sometimes failure does breed success, but when we're talking about some of the big oopsies that can be navigated in terms of retaining and motivating our team members um, due to having a mid-level leader in that position, we really want to make sure that we're setting them up for success as much as possible and allowing them to navigate the waters of maybe failure or maybe learning by doing in different realms of our business operations. Now, for anybody that's joining, I'd love just a thumbs up, a heart, give me anything for how many of you can relate to anything that I've just said. You can relate to, it can be overwhelming to have so many different conversations, communications, deliverables coming at you from so many different places. If you can relate to the fact that, yeah, you know, you do have to juggle a lot of different priorities and that, you know, the majority of your day does go to helping your team navigate some of their issues, some of the things that you've gone through as a leader, as a people leader. Now, I would say the majority of you can relate to this. And luckily for you, 
these skills, these people, soft, human, however you'd like to categorize them. I know some people are moving to power skills these days, but this group of skills that aren't our hard technical skills can be strengthened over time. So these skills like resource management, like critical thinking, uh, concise communication, the way in which we deliver that information, and conflict management can all be worked on and improved. So long as you have the proper techniques and the proper guidance to be able to do so. We learn by following methods. We learn by following experience, right? So lucky for you, all these skills can be improved. It just takes understanding how. So a little bit of theory, but mostly a lot of practice and doing, which, you know, in a work environment, sometimes we don't necessarily want to practice something. So we can get nervous and hold it on, hold on to it, keep it to ourselves until we feel confident and comfortable to be able to say whatever that is. Maybe that's a difficult conversation, right, that we need to have. And we're just not sure how to do that. So we avoid doing it, which in time ends up snowballing and making the situation worse. If we had the tools to be able to navigate that conversation, enter it with the confidence that we know how to tackle it and we're somewhat aware of the outcomes, well, then we'd probably have it a lot sooner and everybody's lives would be much easier, right? So with that, as we look to strengthen these skills, we really need to take a good, long, hard look in the mirror as leaders, as the ones who are providing this information and understand who we are and how we operate as individual contributors before we can, we can even think about how we're influencing others. That allows us to show up as the most influential and effective leaders. It's kind of that intersection between self-awareness and social awareness where influential leadership lies, right? How am I operating? How do I feel? And how am I perceived by others? Or how do I perceive others? Are my assumptions simply that assumptions or are these perceptions rooted in fact? What can I do with these? So with this idea that we're focusing on self-awareness so that we can be influential leaders for our team members, we're understanding, we're asking questions. Let's dive into in our short little time together today, let's dive into six quick checks that we can do as leaders to make sure that we're moving in the right direction towards that influential and confident leadership. At the end of the day, responsible leadership, and um, if you are, if you've been to any of our training programs, you know that this is one of my favorite quotes. But responsible leadership is really about being aware of what influences you more than the influence you have on others. How what is influencing you will directly impact the way that you show up and influence others. So it all starts at home, right? It all starts with you. So tip number one. And again, I'll provide all of these as a visual should you wish to download it and go through them yourself. You have a built-in checklist. But tip number one is to adopt an agile mindset. We mentioned at the beginning that there are so many challenges that our mid-level leaders face. Um, and you're constantly in different rooms wearing different hats. The ability to pivot, to know who you're going into conversation with, and to get buy-in or find residence as quickly or as easily as possible really requires some agility on your part to know who you're speaking to, why you're speaking to them that way, and how you should be speaking to them should be a top priority, right? Sometimes we go move from, from situation to situation, and it can be difficult to remember that we're talking to different human beings with different sets of priorities and different ways of communicating. On average, we communicate with about eight to 23 different individuals, and that can be a lot for especially somebody who is that main hub, that, that main nucleus for all of the information coming and going. It's a lot to be able to turn, reiterate in a way that that person will digest uh, most effectively. So the first thing is to think about how we are adapting and entering any conversation or any situation with an agile mindset, that we're thinking about who we're talking to, we're understanding and preparing our message, and then we're delivering that message in a way that garners us the best results at the end of the day by connecting with that person. Now, this might seem a little ominous and a lot to think about in going into a conversation, but it does become second nature when you learn more about somebody else, right? When you learn about somebody else's communication style, every single time you're not sitting thinking, hmm, how does this person communicate? You get used to it, it becomes that second nature, and then you communicate more effectively moving forward. So not only are you building your own strength, but you're building a communication pathway between yourself and somebody else. You're building an expectation for communication. Tip number two is to understand your available resources. Are you best utilizing the resources that are available to you? 
a lot of our mid-level leaders don't know what resources are available to them or they mismanage their current resources. So resources meaning your time. Where are you giving all of your time and energy to, right? Is, are you effectively using your time? Are you time blocking? Are you sitting in meetings that you don't need to be in? Are you creating meetings that you don't need to be creating? Is your delegation taking longer than it should because you're not walking through the steps and effectively delegating, right? So time is a huge resource that a lot of our mid-level managers have a hard time navigating. There are ways and tips and tricks that we can really, we can really hone in on how to best utilize our time day to day in that eight hour workday, if that's an eight hour workday for you. Are we using the resources of our team, right? We are, a team is essentially a patchwork of many different strengths, many different folks who are coming together and bringing something to the table. Do we know what those strengths are? Are we able to leverage, you know, Joan's strength in X where somebody else, Tim over here, can be working on this project. How are we making sure that we're really utilizing every resource that we have av available to us so we're not dropping the ball on some things that maybe we don't have assigned or we're not creating redundancies within our organization and you know making busy work. So making sure that we're using our resources effectively, but most importantly, your energy as a leader as well. How are you conserving your energy, taking some time to think, to regroup, and ensuring that you know the things that we do have control over, like having enough water, eating your lunch when you're busy, and taking five minutes away from your computer just to reset so that you can come back and have a reasonable conversation? How are you managing your energy appropriately? So that's tip number two, understanding your available resources. Tip number three understanding how you receive feedback. Remember, feedback isn't about you, but it starts with you. And usually when we receive feedback or the way in which we receive feedback, whether positively or constructively, is the way that we also might provide feedback because it's what we're used to, what we know and what we like, right? So at the end of the day, when we understand how we receive feedback, it allows us to have a more open conversation with our team members to say, this is how I like to receive feedback, because at the end of the day, as leaders, we should also be receiving feedback. How do you like to receive feedback? Do you need some time to digest that feedback after I provide it? We can schedule a follow-up call. Do you like to figure things out immediately after receiving that feedback? If so, I'll book additional time, right? So understanding that something might be uncomfortable for us because it's not our natural, natural way of receiving feedback or providing feedback, but when we're thinking about who we're speaking to, they're the end goal. They're the person that we want to focus on. And so that becomes our top priority. Becoming aware of how you receive feedback is the first step in knowing how you provide feedback. Tip number four, knowing what motivates you, what gets you out of bed in the morning, what makes you show up to work to meet expectations, what makes you exceed expectations. Only then, and pretty on the same vein, uh, similar vein to tip number three, is that sometimes the things that motivate us, maybe a really juicy bonus check or maybe a pat on the back might not be what our team is looking for and that might not motivate them. You can really lose people if you are sharing your own motivators and that's not something that drives them internally, right? So understanding what motivates you again, first and foremost, so that also maybe as a leader, if you're having those dips in motivation, you can say, okay, here's something that can perk me up. I can ask from my leader, for this motivation, for more praise, for, you know, I, I'd love to see how my bonus structure is broken down so I can see where I've earned that monetary reward. Whatever that means, it allows us to categorize and ask for what we want from our leaders. And it also helps us to understand how we can best motivate our individual teams as well. Tip number five is identify your collaborative working style. So how open are you to the ideas of others? And how much do you like to collaborate versus how much do you like to work independently? These are things, especially as a leader, when your team's looking to you, maybe to ask questions, maybe to have collaborative work sessions that can influence the way that they show up, the way that they come and talk to you, how comfortable they, am, they are, apologies, approaching you to say, hey, I'd really love a work session. Understanding your own collaborative work style and maybe where that invites more collaboration within your team or perhaps where that might limit collaboration in your team 
is really helpful to know and then to have conversations from there. And finally, number six is understanding how you communicate. Conflict often arises because of how something is said, not because of what is said, the majority of the time. Know how you communicate and prefer to be communicated with as a start and then learn about your team. For example, you know, I'm, I'm triaging my inbox right now. I have a lot of emails. So if you have something that's urgent, can you just send me a Slack message? I'll be able to check that rather than somebody expecting a reply to your email that's sitting in your inbox and you're simply not getting to it because you didn't think it was urgent or important. Communicate with your team, provide that information and allow them to take ownership over the way that they communicate with you, but also know how they can access you best, right? Now we talked about those six tips that were very high level, quite brief, and I'd like to introduce a solution, um, which is our seven week spark leadership and communication incubator course that's designed to help uncover and strengthen these particular six areas of leadership. So in addition to these, we delve into topics like strategic decision making, adaptive leadership, um, conflict resolution, delegation, and much more, with each week being dedicated to a specific skill set that will equip you with the practical tools and the ability to practice each of those six skill sets. Now, we've run this for organizations and teams to come together, and we're offering this again um, as a, as an ind for individual leaders to come and take ownership over their own learning and development. So if this is something that you know, you're looking to strengthen and maybe your, your organization doesn't have anything lined up at this point, you can join our cohort with additional leaders who are looking to upskill in the exact same way as you are, face the exact same challenges that you do, and have the ability to network alongside them. By the end of this course, you'll be able to see some tangible benefits, much like our past Spark alumni have, like the ability to have a constructive conversation in a way that you couldn't before to reframe some of your positions to get faster buy-in, to practice feedback before you go out and give your first performance review ever to your team, right? All of these things that cause a little bit of stress and anxiety before we go into them, we're giving you the perfect safe incubator space to be able to practice alongside peers who are learning just like you. In addition to this, we also use a proprietary cognitive assessment called Spark to be able to identify the following key factors that are your drivers of motivation, collaboration, and communication. So we're looking at, and these might sound relatively familiar, your resource management, so strategy versus execution, where do your strengths lie, feedback responsiveness, how comfortable are you with feedback, and what does that look like for you in terms of providing and receiving feedback, your motivation for excellence, what makes you strive for that above and beyond, your collaborative willingness, are you more of an individual team player, or do you like that collaborative time? And how do you meet in the middle and find happy balance while protecting everybody's boundaries? And finally, communication styles. What does that look like? What's an email etiquette, um, phone call etiquette, video etiquette? We go over all of those pieces. Now, this is a seven-week program, so each module is dedicated to a specific week. And I can send more information if you are interested. But ultimately, over the course of seven weeks, you'll receive... Um, seven two-hour live video team trainings. All of the sessions are recorded, so you will have a, a learning management hub where you can go in, revisit anything that you've missed, or re-watch anything you'd like to re-watch. You have weekly office hours, um, should the team and cohort decide on that and, and want that on Zoom, or an open forum discussion, a place to be able to continue the conversation ultimately at the end of the day. Each of you will receive a 15 minute introductory call with our trainer so we can really dial in on some of the things and core competencies that you'd like to work on, making sure that we are solving for those over the course of seven weeks. You also have full access to our Vend group community where other Spark alumni live, they contribute and share articles. We have webinars, guest speakers, so you get access to all of that information to continue your own learning and development. And finally, an opportunity to network with folks just like you. Oh, I should also mention, uh, you'll get some bragging rights. You do get a certificate of completion that you can share across LinkedIn, um, pop on your resume to say that you've completed this leadership course and, and show whether that's your team when you're buying for a promotion or maybe looking for a new job, you're able to pop that right on your resume. 
Now we are starting at the end of September, September 26th to be exact, which is a Tuesday, running over the course of six weeks. The session time is TBD, but we do have applications open right now. So if you are interested in this investment of 14 hours of learning and development to upskill and improve some of the challenges that you're facing, I would encourage you to apply. We'll pop the link in the in the comments so you'll be able to um, to follow that link to be able to apply directly. And a member of our team will be in touch about your application and make sure that we are the right fit strategically for your leadership goals and initiatives for the end of 2022, end of 2023, looking into 2024. With that being said, if you have any questions, please feel free to share them in the chat. Um, I'll stick around for a couple of minutes. Otherwise, I want to thank you for joining and being here and hope to see you in our Spark Incubator in September. Perfect. Thanks, everybody.